Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. Today, we are going to take a closer look at ways to demagnetize your moving coil phono cartridge and discuss the pros and possible cons of doing so. But before we get into why a moving coil may need to be demagnetized occasionally, let's look at how the moving coil variety of phono cartridges works. The core of a moving coil cartridge is comprised of the cartridge body, which houses a set of stationary magnets, and a set of wire coils wrapped around a permeable core former, attached to the top portion of the cantilever. That assembly is free to move throughout the proximity of that stationary magnetic assembly. As the stylus at the bottom end of the cantilever traces the groove, the mechanical movement and vibration of the stylus cantilever damper system fluctuates the positions of those coils through the flux fields of the stationary magnets. That directed movement induces a current in the coils, generating the minute electrical signal that is sent to your phono preamplifier to reconstruct the audio signal that was stamped into the LP's groove. Most designs use soft magnetic materials for the coil's cores and may be fabricated from a variety of materials, iron, mu metal, amorphous cobalt, titanium, even liquid crystal polymers, a unique class of polymer that offers a highly ordered molecular structure. When selecting the material to be used for the core material in a coil's design, it's important to consider its permeability and inductance. A core with high permeability, like iron or ferrite, can support more magnetic flux and must be magnetically oriented or magnetically amorphous. Ideally, the core should remain permanently in a magnetically amorphous state and possess no remnant or residual magnetization. In reality, no such material is completely non-magnetic, and under practical application, over time with play, the core's generated signals will impart a slight degree of magnetization to them. Over repeated play, the electrical output from the coils builds up local magnetic fields that will gradually affect the orientation of the core. As that magnetic effect becomes stronger, it will begin to slightly counteract the induced signal the coils generate, disrupting and degrading the smallest nuances, casting a veil over the sound. This diminished sound is usually so gradual that you may not notice it. However, after degaussing a moving coil cartridge, most will experience a notable degree of increased clarity. This improved clarity manifests as less haze to the musical envelope, restored definition to sound staging, a fuller, more stark sense of space and air around images, enhanced intelligibility and definition of microdynamic expression, and a tightening of the lowest frequencies, including better pitch definition and heft. As I mentioned at the outset, there are several ways to demagnetize your cartridge. I use the AudioQuest DM1000 that I bought over 20 years ago for 100 bucks. To my recollections, the original cartridge demagnetizing device to hit the market was called the Fluxbuster, built by Samico. But neither the DM1000 nor the Fluxbuster is still in production today. To my knowledge, the only current production demagnetizer available is the Aesthetics ABCD2 MC cartridge demagnetizer, which retails for about $175. Now, I have seen both the AudioQuest and Sumiko units selling on the used market, but they both usually command a price not significantly lower than a new aesthetics unit, so you may want to consider that if you're planning on acquiring one for your own use. There are also test records containing specially formulated degaussing tracks, like the Cardis Frequency Sweep and Burning Record, version 2 now, produced by George Cardis and mastered by Stan Ricker, available for about 30 bucks. Some users have found that playing a high-level frequency sweep test track 
will also bring about substantial benefits. Moving magnet cartridge users should take note here, as these LP methods are the safest way to treat your moving magnet carts. One possible additional benefit to using the frequency sweep method is that it may help to reform any capacitors in your phono preamplifier's input circuit. While you may use a demagnetizer on your moving magnet cartridges, use extreme caution. It is absolutely imperative that you remove the stylus assembly before you apply its signal to your cartridge. Failing to do so will permanently damage that removable stylus assembly. Why? If you run an active degaussing current through the big coils in a moving magnet cartridge, the strong electromagnetic field it generates will most likely completely demagnetize the tiny and comparatively weak moving magnets crucial to its operation, effectively destroying the cartridge. Now at that point, you would need to replace the stylus assembly to restore functionality to your cartridge. You have been warned. Now in a moment, I'll show you a free and very simple method that I was first introduced to in the late 1970s by Tasso Spanos, owner of the Opus One retail chain at the main store in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now, on balance, there is a contingent in our industry who openly oppose the idea of demagnetizing entirely. Possibly the most vocal challenger to that process include Alt Jock van den Hall, now in his 80s, the Dutch metallurgist and hi-fi pioneer who founded AJ van den Hall BV in 1980. So what's the big deal? Many, including AJ, have expressed electromagnetically valid concerns about the process, pointing out that demagging will repeatedly shift and over time weaken and reduce the core's Weiss complexes, breaking down the magnetic domain boundaries of these coil cores. The underlying position here is that the process starts a repeated, unbreakable cycle, as the more often you use a degausser, the more frequently you will need to demagnetize. His view is that it's just not wise to demagnetize, pointing out that it only offers a very short-term positive effect, but with greater negative side effects in the long run. I have included a link in today's description that includes an archive of his entire opinion on the matter. To use a degausser, you disconnect the left and right phono cables from your inputs of your phono stage and connect them to the corresponding inputs on the DMAG unit. By using modest amplification to inject a decaying high frequency wattage AC signal through the cartridge's coils, they are saturated to eliminate any existing local magnetization of the core. As the high frequency signal slowly and smoothly attenuates to zero, the process is said to reorient the core according to the magnetic field of the cartridge. The process may be seen to be analogous to the way a tape head demagnetizer works. Using the LP method of demagnetization is simple enough. Cue up the track you want to use and play it. This method is equally useful and safe for both moving coil and moving magnet cartridges. The free method I mentioned can be done easily as well, as follows. With a record playing, perhaps using one of the frequency sweeps available, though that doesn't seem to be necessary, switch the input on your line stage or preamp to any other source. You don't want to damage your speakers or amplifiers with any popping or distortion when you next unplug the phono inputs from your phono stage or preamplifier. Once they are unplugged, with the LP still playing, touch the center signal pin from the right channel RCA jack to the outer shield barrel of the left channel RCA jack and the center signal pin from the left channel RCA jack to the outer shield barrel of the right channel RCA jack. Hold them together for something like 45 to 60 seconds making sure that they remain in secure contact with one another. And when you're done, you plug it back in. The clear advantage of this method is that while it may not be seen to be quite as effective as a powered demagnetizer on a moving coil cartridge, it does work. And it is perfectly safe for both moving coil 
or moving magnet cartridges. Once reconnected, you should note more apparent clarity, less haze, improved definition to sound staging and the space of the acoustic of the recording, more air around images, enhanced intelligibility and definition of microdynamic expression, and the tightening of the lowest frequencies, including better pitch definition and heft. Again, I must stress the dangers of not using any of the power demagnetizers on a moving magnet cartridge if you either cannot or have not removed the replaceable stylus assembly. Failing to do so will permanently damage that assembly. Thoughts vary on how frequently you should demagnetize your cartridge, with recommendations ranging as widely as from every week to something on the order of 100 hours of play. For me, I literally play it by ear. It is more a consideration of what I'm hearing, combined with the knowledge of how many records I've played since the last treatment, than any kind of routine or schedule. If I feel I'm missing microdynamic nuance or the images don't seem as focused or correctly sized as they should be, I'll get out the DM-1000 and fire it up. If you decide to try out this tweak, you will likely find your own standards. Those who aren't deterred by the sensible arguments against demagging, be sure to post your personal experiences here, sharing what method or methods you used, what you heard, and how much value you place on its effectiveness. As always, thank you for taking the time to drop by today. Further information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers.